Lemon. They say when life gives you some, make lemonade. Well, we've never been ones to listen to what they have to say. We'd rather make something far more interesting like electricity. So follow along and see how we take this and turn it into this. Let's take a quick look at what you'll need to do this. You'll need the following common items. Lemons, galvanized nails, and make sure they're galvanized. Galvanized objects have zinc in them, which is important for the cell to work well. Copper wire, an LED, wire cutters, mini jumper cables, and a multimeter to be sure the juice is flowing. Pun intended. Let's get to work. We'll start by rolling our lemon on the table to break up the pulping and get it nice and juicy on the inside. Next, we'll take the galvanized nail and stick it into the lemon like so. About two centimeters away from our nail, we'll insert this copper wire. These are called the electrodes of our cell. Both should go into the lemon about two inches, making sure that they don't touch each other on the inside of the lemon. And that's it. Once the electrodes are in the lemon, we have our cell. Nothing to it, right? Well, we can test that it's working by hooking up a multimeter and reading the voltage. As you can see here, we're getting about 0.9 volts from our lemon cell. Not bad for a piece of fruit, but you're thinking, what can I do with it? Can I use it to start my car? Can I power my iPod? Well, hold on a second. Electrical power is the harnessing of electrons in motion. In our lemon cell, the copper electrode is giving up electrons to the zinc-coated nail, making it the positive electrode and the nail the negative. The citric acid in the lemon acts as our electrolyte, which is what allows for these electrons to flow from one electrode to the other inside our lemon. If we were to connect the exposed ends of both electrodes with a wire, the electrons would flow as quickly as possible in a loop, as so. This is referred to as a short circuit, and isn't really good for anything but wearing out your cell really quickly. By introducing a load on the system, though, we're able to harness this energy and convert it into something useful. So let's use this LED as our load and attach it to our lemon cell. Doing so will convert our electrical energy into light energy. To attach the LED, look closely at its side. You'll notice there's a flat side. This is the side that's attached to our negative lead, the nail. And the positive lead, the copper wire, is attached to the other side. Make sure the LED is hooked up this way. It won't work if the leads are reversed. Really quickly, check to see that you hooked your LED up properly by touching your jumpers to a standard alkaline battery like so. It should light up just like this. Now let's attach the LED to our lemon cell. Hmm, everything's hooked up, but as you can see the LED remains unlit. We simply aren't getting enough power out of the cell to do the work. As you recall, we get almost one volt, but our lemon cell is still lacking. Here, let me show you what I mean. In order to get power from a battery, or any electrical source for that matter, we require two things, voltage and current. Pretend for a moment that these yellow balls are electrons flowing through our system. Assume that the number of balls represent the voltage, and the speed the balls are traveling represent the current. Right now, we simply don't have enough yellow balls or electrons to light our LED. Let's add a second lemon cell. Doing so increases the voltage so that we can now light the LED. To do this, attach the positive lead of one lemon to the negative lead of the next. Here we go. As you can see now, we've got twice the voltage we had with one cell. Adding cells in series like this does just that. It adds their voltages together. If we go back to our yellow balls flowing through the tube example, you can see now we've got more voltage to do work with. Attaching the LED now will create a dim light. Adding a third lemon in this series will make the LED glow even brighter. By attaching multiple cells together, we are now creating a true battery, a group of cells working together. So if it took three of these lemons just to power a small LED, you can imagine what it must take to power something like, oh, your iPod, 33,000 lemons, your laptop, 650,000 lemons, an electric car, 60 million lemons. That's a lot of lemons. Is it the solution to the world's energy crisis? Probably not, but it sure is one of life's little mysteries.